the no doesn't define you, but how you respond to it does. Just wanna let that sink in. Hi dancers, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to Twin Talks Ballet. Today, I'm here to talk about rejection oh, and how to handle it. I know sometimes receiving those letters that say, we regret to inform you that due to limited capacity, we do not have a space for you in our summer program, university dance uh, program, or you know, from a company. Although to be honest, <laughs> if you've auditioned for companies before, you know that oftentimes the no is just silence. Regardless, it hurts a little bit, am I right? To receive those rejections. And so I wanna talk through my best tips as a former professional dancer who understands and a mindset coach for dancers on how to overcome the emotional pain sometimes that comes with rejection so that you can move forward through audition season with hope, resilience, and positivity. So if that's what you'd like more of this spring, keep on watching. The first point I wanna share with you guys is to change your language and to therefore take charge of the meaning that you are making out of getting this letter. What do I mean by changing your language? First off, get rid of the word rejection. Listen, I've gotten so many of those rejection letters to know from experience that Literally not a single one of those letters had the word rejection in it. No one said, we are rejecting you. No one said, you are not good enough. No one said, you're a terrible dancer. So I don't assign the word rejection to those letters because all it is, is just a no. It's very objective. That's literally all it is. And sure, maybe I can gain feedback from that experience and say, okay, well, objectively, maybe my skill level wasn't up to par for that program. But in that, listen to the way I just phrased that. It was a productive way of thinking. My skill level objectively isn't there yet. And then I can break that down. How? What can I improve for next time? So I'm turning it into, instead of a failure, it's a feedback moment that I can use to fuel my fire towards my goals for next year. I can use that experience to make me better. So by first changing that word from rejection to just a no, first you're taking out that emotion from the experience of getting this letter. Now, I don't mean that emotion won't still be there. Of course, you're gonna be nervous when you open it, you're gonna have that adrenaline, and then maybe you know your heart's gonna sink when you get that no, and that's totally normal. But after that initial flood of emotion, how do you kind of hold on to your emotions around that experience? Is it something you just kind of feel and you're like, ah, bummer, and then you just go on about your life? Or is every single no that you get proof that you're really not a good dancer? You'll never be able to reach your goals of getting into that program or becoming a professional dancer. And so switch your language from this is a rejection to it's just a no. And then the second part of this is take charge of the meaning you're creating out of getting that no. You have total control over this. You have choice over how you interpret and internalize these events. So when you get a no, take it for what it really says. We regret to inform you due to, often this says, limited capacity, we do not have a space for you in this program. So, okay, it's just a no. What meaning do you create out of that though? Is it that you are inadequate, that you're really no good, that you will never be good enough? which is a huge projection on your future based off of this limited moment in time. Think of how much life you have ahead of you. Think of how many classes you have, which is a continual opportunity every day or several times a week to make progress, you know? So making these big time meanings and assumptions off of that one moment in time can be incredibly damaging to you emotionally and it can stunt your growth and your progress and your results in your life. So dancers, take this seriously. And I want to invite you to be thoughtful about what meaning you create out of getting these no's. For me, it was, oh, well, you know, they are freeing me from going to this program. So I'm free to pursue a different opportunity that's a better fit. Or I would have that instinct of trust. You know, I'm going to trust that this wasn't a, the best fit for me in my training at this time. I know I wanted to go there for X, Y, Z reasons. But, you know, maybe what I want and what's good for me are a little different right now. 
So I'm going to trust there's something better. I'm going to see the good and whatever else I can do. Or I'm going to say, okay, next. Okay, what else can I do? Great. You know, being resourceful, opportunistic, trusting, having that abundance mindset. You are free to create whatever meaning you want out of this. But dancers, please make it empowering and start with just calling these letters what they are. It's just a no. You're not being rejected, at least not in the very ugly way that we tend to perceive that we're being rejected. The second point I want to share with you is to not fear getting no, but rather to go for no's. Now, I know this is way easier said than done, but here's what I mean by this. Instead of ahead of time when you're preparing to go into your auditions, fearing getting no because it's going to hurt your feelings, run into the arms of no. You know, embrace that getting a no is a part of the process. It, it's part of the road to getting a yes by opening yourself up to that exciting possibility of, you know, you audition and that literally opens a door for you to get a yes that was closed before. You're opening yourself up to that possibility. You also open yourself up to the possibility of hearing no. But again, if you take charge of the meaning you create out of the no, you're going to be able to be a lot more objective and maybe having that sense of empowerment around getting a no. But I really want you to know that if you go into audition season, of course, you're not trying to hear no. You obviously have a compulsion to want to do your best. You can trust yourself to want to do your best. Don't worry. The second you stop fearing no doesn't mean your quality of dancing is going to change. In fact, it might even get better because that stress of hearing no and that angst around it, what does that do to your body? It usually does this, right? Do we dance well when we're tense? I know I don't, and I know every dancer I've worked with doesn't either. So this can actually make your dancing better to take off that pressure. And so I want you to remember this phrase, and I didn't make this up by the way, but I've heard it many times. Yes, lives in the land of no. So go for as many no's as you can in a way, be as open to as many no's as you can, because the more opportunities you open yourself up to, statistically speaking, the more no's you open yourself up to, but also the more yeses you open yourself up to. And this mindset might seem a little silly, but it will actually help you to release attachment from needing to hear yes every single time you audition in order to bolster your sense of confidence and self-esteem. It kind of releases that attachment. So you're able to just gain positive resources from these experiences rather than every single audition you're, you're fearing no. The less attachment you have to hearing yes, Chances are the better you'll dance and hey, maybe the more yeses you'll get. Okay, the third point I want to share with you, and I think you already know this, but it's really important. No matter what, you have to keep living with what you have and doing something with what you have rather than dwelling and staying stuck on what you wish you had, what you wished happened. It is okay to create space to feel what you're feeling, to instead of you know getting in the car after your audition or closing your computer if it was a Zoom audition and being like, it's fine, it's fine, you know, and you know you didn't perform well, but you're like, it's fine, I have to be positive, it's fine, it's fine. You don't have to do that. You know, you can process your emotions. That is a healthy thing to do. So I invite you to do that. What I'm speaking on is if after that initial wave of emotion, the way you hold on to that experience is one that every time you think of it consistently brings up negative emotions for you, that means you haven't really let it go. And I know so many dancers who have a miserable spring for multiple years in a row because yeah, maybe they got yes a couple times, but they're still so stuck on the no. The, the rejection. And I want to tell you that your mental space and what you allow to occupy your focus, your focus is so precious, by the way, what you allow to occupy your focus is so important to protect and to optimize. So if you are letting your mind just run down these trips of, oh, I should have been good enough to get into that program. All my friends did and I didn't. I must really not be a good dancer. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Oh, I didn't get into that program and now my summer is going to be terrible. Oh, I didn't get into that year-round program. So my maybe I'll never get the professional training I wanted and I won't be a professional. Hey, I've received rejections to all sorts of things. So I understand. I empathize with you. But this is your one life that you have to live, okay? And every moment is one that we don't get back. 
It sounds corny, but that's just because it is what it is. We know it, all right? I wanna share with you just how confidence inducing and how wonderful it is to live with a commitment to being resourceful, to focusing on what you do have and what you are going to make out of that rather than what you don't have. So if you get literally no yeses this year, okay, I can understand that's disappointing because your expectations and your hopes have not been matched with your reality yet. But what you can do is you can say, okay, I have a summer open to totally take charge of my training. I'm going to create a new solution for myself. I'm going to figure out a new training situation for myself. And maybe I'm going to customize it based off of what I know my goals and my needs are right now. And it is so empowering dancers to get in the practice of constantly putting your mind and your awareness on what do I have and what can I do with it? This is such a, an awesome practice to live your whole life with. You know, maybe you wake up tired one morning and instead of being like, oh, I woke up tired, the whole day is going to be terrible. It's okay. I woke up more tired than usual. What can I learn from it? And what am I going to do about it? That disposition, that compulsion to always say, what am I going to do about it? The more you live like that and actually do the things that you, you know, the, the things that you come up with in response to that question, the more confidence you build because you're building up a library of evidence in your life of like, wow, remember that one time I got all those, all those no's, all those letters declining my desire to be in these summer programs. And I still had an amazing summer anyway. Huh? Wow. I really respect myself for that. You build self-respect, you build confidence and you build hope that the next time life doesn't go exactly the way you wanted it it's going to be okay because you are going to make something out of it. Hey dancers, I wanted to quickly pause today's video to talk to you about how I can support you as a mindset coach for dancers. So if you're really resonating with what I'm talking about in this video, if you're like, yeah, that's me, my sense of inadequacy as a dancer and lack of belief in myself is really causing me to go into negative thought spirals in class. It is making me so nervous and locked up before every audition. If Every time you receive a no, it really feels like confirmation that you're not going anywhere in this career. Then I would be so happy to support you through identifying those limiting beliefs, breaking down those insecurities, and changing your mindset to actually shift into a level of confidence that allows you to perform at your personal best on a consistent basis with joy in the process for what you're doing. Because, you know, Chances are you started taking ballet so seriously because you love it. And one of my favorite things to do in the coaching process with dancers is to not only help them let go of those limiting beliefs, the fears, the doubts about themselves that are blocking them from having joy in the studio and performing well, but also when they're shifting into confidence to see them actually enjoying themselves again in their art. And when they're in that space of enjoyment, you can actually dance far better than you probably thought you ever could. Much better definitely than when your mind is constantly being flooded with intrusive thoughts about how inadequate you are. So if you would like support in shifting your mindset to support your highest level of performance, especially during audition season, reach out Click the link in the description to visit kirstenkemp.com, my website, where you can learn more about my coaching services and also schedule or apply for a free consultation where you and I can discuss specifically what you've been struggling with, what you would like to achieve through mindset coaching. And if we feel, feel we're a good fit for each other, I'll describe more about the coaching process as well. And we'll talk about how many sessions I would recommend and next steps for working together. On my website, you can also find a bunch of testimonials from other dancers I've worked with in the past that I think you'll find really encouraging. So reach out. Can't wait to meet some of you and let's get on with the video. The fourth thing I want to share is that every time you hear no, this is an amazing opportunity to practice four different mindsets that I love to share with dancers specifically that I coach as a mindset coach. First is having a mindset of resourcefulness. A resourceful mindset is one, like I described earlier, that says, okay, here's what I have. Here's what I'm going to do about it. It's a way of thinking and acting in which you assess what you have and then you work on making something even better out of what resources you already have available to you. Instead of getting so stuck on what do I not have and why do I pity myself for it? The second mindset is an opportunistic mindset. 
I love this one. In everything, see the opportunity in the situation. Whether it feels emotionally wonderful to you or emotionally negative to you, if you get that no, what opportunity is there? An opportunity to learn, to grow, to expand your comfort zone, to discover new ways of spending your summer and new ways of training that maybe you have never thought of before because everyone's just talking about, oh, summer intensives, oh, you have to go to this level of company to be happy with your life as a dancer. This is an opportunity for you to you know, create your own path and really discover a unique way of living as a dancer that makes you happy. Or maybe it's a wonderful opportunity for you to really dive in into your insecurities and to look them straight in the face. What do I really believe about myself? What are the messages that I just allow to run through my head every single time I dance? Why am I in agreement with those thoughts about like how I'll never be good enough? And you use this time as an opportunity to dive straight into those uncomfortable thoughts and resolve them, which is by the way, what I help dancers do. So if you'd like help with that, reach out. Next is the abundance mindset. Oh, I love all these, but man, I really love this one. So the abundance mindset is recognizing that no matter what, we're always making assumptions about our world around us, our lives, ourselves. We're always making assumptions. Why do I say assumptions? Because we do not possess the mental capacity to see ourselves objectively exactly as we are. We don't possess the mental capacity to see the world or our futures exactly as they are or will be. Just knowing that and saying, hey, you know what? When I look at my future, in a pessimistic way. I'll probably never be able to do this. I'll probably never be good enough for that. I'll, I'll never make it to this kind of program. We call that realistic so often, but if it hasn't happened yet, how realistic is it? You know, take charge over what assumptions you're making about yourself now, your past even, and what that means about your future. And using that assumption and also the awareness that you can choose your perspective, which is amazing because your perspective determines how you feel, how you act, and what results you create. It influences what opportunities you pursue that you see or you don't see. And this is incredibly important. Your perspective literally shapes your life experience. So when you choose to have an abundant mindset, what that means is you are empowering yourself with the assumption that you have everything you need to take your next step. You have more than enough resources around you, even if it doesn't feel like it right now. You are setting your mind on what you have and what you can do with that and then what could be. You're, you're looking for what more is out there, coming from this assumption that there is more, that there is an abundance of what you're looking for. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the learning mindset. I guess it kind of ties in with the opportunistic mindset in that you're focused on every experience as an opportunity to give yourself feedback that you can learn from to make yourself better. It's really that simple. So use audition season as a learning opportunity for you to actually incorporate it as a part of your training. It's not just a time to prove yourself, it's a part of your training and your growth. So learn from it. The last point I'll share with you is that the no doesn't define you, but how you respond to it does. Just wanna let that sink in. Of course, if you respond to a no, like, oh, I'm a terrible dancer, I'll never be good enough. That interpretation can serve as a self-fulfilling prophecy because maybe you carry that into every class you take. You're so down on yourself you can't focus. You're so down on yourself that you're stressed and you're physically locked up. And then every time you get out of focus, you don't learn the combination well, then you don't do the combination well. And then you're like, see, I am a terrible dancer. And goodness, with enough of that, I would give up. I would burn out. Remember that you get to choose how you are defined. You get to choose how you will internalize and interpret each no and what you do about it and therefore what results you end up creating with your life as a dancer. You're in charge of that. So dancers, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Definitely give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you learned from this video and what you're going to do as a result of watching it. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more audition related videos, I have tons on my channel. So I will link some in a playlist or just in the description box down below and in addition to the cards in this video. So really have a grand time watching or binge watching all those audition videos. And in the meantime, 
uh, subscribe so you don't miss my next video and I'll see you next time. Bye.